Welcome to the Beast Rider Podcast. I am your host, Ryan Sakamoto, and today we're going to be discussing and settling the debate as to who the best middle linebacker in the NFL is, and I think it comes down to the NFC West. I think you have Seattle Seahawks' Bobby Wagner, who's been the gold standard for the better half of this decade, and then you have upcoming and rising sensation middle linebacker Fred Warner from the San Francisco 49ers. Now, if you were to ask me, I think Fred Warner took over the crown last year. I thought he was a first-team All-Pro snub last year, and then I tweeted it out, and people were like, no, you're Haiti. Bobby Wagner's still the best middle linebacker. I was like, no, dude, he's not. He's not. Stop. Stop playing. And then this year, I said it again, and I put out two podcasts, two, not one, two podcasts on why Fred Warner needs to be extended long-term in a front-loaded contract, not back-loaded contract. So it's really important that you guys watch my podcast. And the reason I say that, it's not because I'm being biased. It's so you can stay up to date on my takes and the reasoning that I'm saying this analysis, because I think a lot of times you guys would agree with it. And if you don't, that's fine too. But at least you can kind of gauge where we both stand, all right, as far as our perspe- perspectives are concerned on each of the NFL issues that arise. So, when it comes down to Fred Warner, yes, I believe he's the best middle linebacker in the NFL for a number of reasons. As you guys know, I grade all 32 NFL teams on a daily basis. I don't have a weekend. My weekends are consumed with NFL and college football coverage, so I can prepare for the upcoming draft and then kind of see which way the GMs would like to go in as the draft approaches, all right? So, let's talk with, let's, let's start with Fred Warner. All right. Fred Warner to me is the best middle linebacker in the NFL. He was a 2018 third round pick and he has one year left after this year on his rookie deal. Now, what GMs typically like to do, if you saw my podcast on Fred Warner, which I include in the description below, you can see all the podcast playlists. But what GMs like to do is they like to extend him one year prior to for him hitting that rookie fourth year contract. So Fred Warner, there was no fifth year option for him because he won the first round pick. As a result, he was a second-round pick, and thus a four-year deal was met and agreed upon. Now, he's been outplaying that four-year contract. I tweeted it out. He makes less than $1 million a year. Fred Warner makes less than $1 million a year. You know how much Bobby Wagner makes a year annually? When you break it when you break it up, his contract annually, divided by the number of years and life, life of the contract, he's making $18 million. Dude, that's like being underpaid in the talk uh, in, in the tech industry. Like here in Silicon Valley, dude, if you're the top sales guy, but yet you're making not even what is it five percent or whatever of some other guy's salary, but you're you're the top sales guy. Like, how does that make sense? It doesn't, bro. Like, it really doesn't. So Fred Warner needs a front-loaded contract. I think he's been due for one for quite a long time. If the 49ers wanted to, they could have extended him last year. I'm just joking. They couldn't. There's no money involved. But you get where I'm point. The value with Fred Warner is he's the heart and soul of the defense. You take out the heart, you lose the soul. All right? So getting back to my grading system, I graded the Seahawks Bobby Wagner, and I graded the 49ers Bob, or Bobby Wagner, 49ers Fred Warner, and then I came up with, formulated my grade, and did a comparison of the two players. Now, since they both play in the NFC West, they basically play, both play the same teams outside of uh outside of a few, but let's get down to it, all right? And in my grading system, I break it down into a lot of parameters. I watch every play probably like, I don't know, five or six times different angles, coaches film, broadcast film, and then I put two and two together, and then I rewatch it in slow motion, okay? So that's just on one play, all right? So you got to break it down into how defensive linemen are playing their, their techniques, all right? Secondly, you guys look at the second level and how the linebackers are reading their splits based on the defensive line playing their techniques. Then you got to break it down into zone versus man coverage. Then you got to talk about gap integrity, setting the edge, and gap control. And then you got to talk about how many missed tackles a player has versus run and versus pass. And then you got to talk about coverage wins. And then you got to talk about this. And then you got to talk. Yeah, that's how I do my grading system, bro. There's a lot of depth and detail that goes into one single play. So I'm not going to go into the whole formula of how I formula my grading system, but it's a lot on one play, all right? It's very stressful, to be honest with you, but that's how I do it. All right, so let's talk about Fred Warner. Actually, no, we're going to start off with Bobby Wagner. I have my notes here because I didn't memorize his stats, obviously. That would be crazy, Uh, but this is my grading system, how it works out, all right? Starting with Seattle Seahawks, Bobby Wagner. Through Through week eight, obviously they haven't played yet in week nine, but through week eight, Bobby Wagner has four missed assignments and run support. He has four missed tackles versus the run. He has two and a half stuffs. Now, stuffs is a stat that is developed 
and basically means if you make a tackle for no gain or behind the line of scrimmage. So basically a defensive tackle, not a defensive tackle, but a defensive player making a tackle that results in either a no gain or a tackle for loss. He has two and a half of those on the air. He has one quarterback pressure resulting in a loss of down, four quarterback hits resulting in a loss of down, two sacks, zero interceptions, and four pass breakups. Not bad for Bobby Wagner, right? Not bad. Now let's take a look at Fred Warner. Again, I want to do an apples-to-apples comparison. So since the 49ers are still playing week-to-week and not having their bye yet, I didn't count today's or last night's Packers game. So this is solely based on the first eight games of the year. Okay, so Fred Warner. He has six missed assignments compared to Bobby Wagner's four missed assignments. All right, so winner, Bobby Wagner. Not by much, but by two. All right? Then you look at it at missed tackles versus the run. Fred Warner has four. Bobby Wagner has four. So it's a wash. Stuffs, right? Bobby Wagner, I just said, had two and a half. Fred Warner has seven. Seven. Seven stuffs. That's a lot of stuffs. So he wins in that category. It's not even close. All right. Then you look at the quarterback pressures, right? Fred Warner has three. Bobby Wagner has one. Again, Fred Warner leading. Quarterback hits. Bobby Wagner has four. Fred Warner has two. So give that one to Bobby Wagner. All right. Then you look at sacks. All right. Bobby Wagner has two sacks. Fred Warner has zero. All right. So obviously Bobby Wagner wins that one. All of his sacks came against the San Francisco 49ers, ironically, and who the best linebacker in the game was. And Michael Robinson said it was Bobby Wagner. I would have to agree in that game he was, but overall he's not. All right, no disrespect, but that's what that's how I see it. Interceptions. Bobby Wagner has zero interceptions compared to Fred Warner, who has two interceptions. So, again, Bobby Wagner leads in the sack department, two, two against zero. Fred Warner leads in the interception department, two against zero. So, you can see how they kind of marry each other. You see how it's kind of a strong debate. All right. Pass breakups. Bobby Wagner has four. Fred Warner has one. So, again, who wins that debate? Bobby Wagner. All right. Now... We're going to delve deeper, all right? In my grading system, I break out, I break down, like I said, man versus zone coverage, how they're playing their splits, their gap responsibilities, and their zone, and their respective zones based on the coverage that's being asked as an underneath defender. Now, the Seattle Seahawks and San Francisco 49ers mirror schemes in that, you know, obviously we know Robert Sala comes from Seattle, Seattle Seahawks uh, tree, and so what you want to do is you want to kind of see how they play their game. So typically, both teams run to cover three, sometimes they cover four. Rarely do they go cover one or cover two with man or underneath, which is also considered a cover five. But uh, typically what you'll find Fred Warner and Bobby Wagner doing is they'll be just be defending in five to seven yards depth based on the down and distance as defending the hook curl defender. Okay? So, with that being said, in pass coverage, Fred Warner was targeted 26 times this year. 17 of those going for completions and giving up 103 yards in the air. Six of those resulting in first downs and a quarterback passer rating of 41.03. That's ridiculous. That is playing lights out all pro level in pass coverage. Bobby Wagner. I think we're getting somewhere, guys. Bobby Wagner, by my count in my grading system, has been targeted 40 times. 29 of those going for completions, 12 first downs compared to Fred Warner's 6, and yielding a 95.73 quarterback passer rating. Bobby Wagner gives up a 95.73 passer rating. Why? Because of those 29 completions, he's yielded 319 yards of field position. 319 yards compared to 103, you do the math. That's a difference of, I believe that's a 216 yards. Yeah, 216 yards difference. That's a lot of field position to be playing with. The difference from field position that Warner gives up from Bobby Wagner doesn't even account for the amount of total yards that Warner has given up. It's, it's not even a question as to who the best underneath defender is at this point. It's clearly Fred Warner, all right? I look at it from a basketball perspective. For those of you who played basketball, I played basketball. I'm sure a lot of you, a lot of people played basketball. But if you get it, I look at it like this. All right, you could be a great offensive player, 
But if you don't play defense, are you really a good all-around player? My answer is no. Same thing with football. Fans remember the pass rush. Bob Wagner's 2.0, Fred Warner 0. But fans don't also don't put too much stock in the run game. Or in run support. So, can you be a really good overall player if you bring the pass rush, but not very stout in the run game or in pass coverage? My answer is no. A D cannot be good if you can't get to third down anyway, so a pass rush becomes non-existent because you can't stop the run. Plain and simple, guys. It's all, it all comes down to fundamentals in my book, all right? So, yeah, there you have it. The numbers don't lie. My analytics don't lie. My game grades don't lie. Clearly, clearly, Fred Warner is the better all-around player. In fact, in my grading system, with 5 being average on a scale of 10, 5 being average, 6 being above average, 6.5 to 7 is probably Pro Bowl level. Anything above 7.3, you're in all Pro level status. Fred Warner's graded through 8 games, 8.18. 8.18, best middle linebacker in the NFL. And yes, I covered all the Bucks games, and no, Fred Warner still leads there. Okay, sorry, Levante David. Sorry, Devin White. It's Fred Warner. All right. Bobby Wagner came in with a 7.2 grade. All right, so... He's right there at an all-pro level. 7.3 is my cutoff, right? But Fred Warner is almost one point higher than Bobby Wagner. That's saying everything about what you need to know about Fred Warner. The guy is a baller. He needs to be extended in a front-loaded contract. Don't mess around. Wipe your hands clean of Jimmy Ward's contract. Sorry, Jimmy Ward. Jimmy Garoppolo's contract, who's owed $24.1 million next season. Wipe your hands clean there. Use that money to give Fred Warner a front-loaded contract. Because let's face it. And I always say front-loaded because why? Because you know what you're getting in middle linebacker Fred Warner. You're getting the best middle linebacker in the NFL. There's no guesswork involved. You're not banking on his consistent play year in and year out. He's been consistent. He's been proven he's the best player on the field. So why not reward him like such? I guarantee if the front runners don't extend him this offseason, once he hits that contract year, he's going to hold out or he's going to maybe demand a higher premium than what the Fortnite's could extend them now this offseason. So it's better to extend Fred Warner now. Don't let him hit that rookie contract at the end of the year and then have him fighting for his uh, fighting for his services because at the end of the day, let's face it, that inside linebacker class, as I stated in my podcast, if you just click on the description and you'll see all my podcasts, I said it again, but I'll say it again and again and again and again and again and again. That 2008 draft class is pretty loaded. You have Tremaine Edmonds, right, from the Buffalo Bills. First round pick coming up for a contract. You have Roe Consmith from the Chicago Bears coming up for a contract. Then you have Tennessee Titans with Sean Evans coming up for a contract. And with Levante David signing his 2015 contract, which break it down annually into $10 million a year, five-year, $50 million, I believe, guaranteed, or five, five, excuse me, I think it was a five-year, $50 million contract, I don't know how much it was guaranteed. I think it was 24 or 25 million guaranteed or something like that. That contract was signed when Jim Tom Sula was the coach of the 49ers. He's up for a new contract at the end of the year. You don't think he's going to have a barometer and his eyes set on what Bobby Wagner gets annually, which is $18 million? What do you think Fred Warner is going to command on the open market? Because Fred Warner is way better than Levante David. Remember, from a GM perspective, Fred Warner has less tread on his tires. He's younger. He has higher a higher potential ceiling. The guy is an overall better all better all overall athlete. So when you take that into account and you look at it from that standpoint, he's going to command at least fifteen to eighteen million dollars on the open market in a front loaded contract. You're not banking on his future success, like I said. You know what you're getting with Fred Warner. All right. Well, that'll be it today. I hope you like what I had to say. If you did, please subscribe to my YouTube channel in the lower right hand corner as I keep all things beast. Thank you for listening. Take care. Beast Rider, out.